Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this evening for our Publish Now group webinar. And I'm very excited tonight to have Dusty Meehan joining us. Um, Dusty, first of all, she's just a dear friend of mine. I've known her, well, she was my daughter's Girl Scout leader. <laughs> I've known her for a long time. And when I first started working with Tom and I attended his retreat, I know some of the, one of the authors in the room asked the question regarding Publish Now, what about help with marketing and social media? And he goes, you know, I haven't found anyone that can do what I know can be done with social media. So we don't really have that available at this time. And I went, oh, I know someone, I know someone. <laughs> so I connected Dusty and Tom at that time. And many of you who do know Tom well know that Tom builds relationships before he goes into business with anyone or works with anyone. And um, Dusty and him spent a few months talking about different ways in which she could help monetize his message through social media marketing and blogs and all that wonderful content creation that can help bring people into the retreats. So in addition to if any of you saw Tom's website previously, you know that there's been a major overhaul with his website and I'm thrilled with that because we've actually digitized so many things like registrations and made the process more streamlined and we are continuing to do that and finally I can just carve out some more time to focus on different areas to do that but we're getting there and it's an honor that we have Dusty coming on now to help our authors monetize their message with marketing strategies because it's so important as you know it's not just birthing the book it's raising the book, feeding it, diapering it, doing all those things that you need to do to raise the book and raise the awareness around the book. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over to Dusty so that she can share some of the information, exciting news that we have for our authors. And again, at the end, we will open it up to Q&A. So save your questions at that time and we'll be happy to answer them. All right. Great. Thanks, Sabrina. Hi, everyone. Um, I know for some of you, this isn't the first time we've had a chance to spend some time together on a webinar, but I'm especially excited about the presentation tonight. Um, like Sabrina just said, uh, Tom wanted to do this for his own brand first before he put it out there as something that the Tom Bird Method company could offer to its, its partners and customers. And so he can now confidently offer this as another leg of his brand. You can now um, attend a workshop, write your book, publish your book, and now um, actually do the marketing aspect. But uh, I would not torture you all with an hour and a half marketing pitch. So instead, I've decided to turn this into another free content webinar all about what you can do on your own and really take the slideshow that I've put together uh, and start some of these tasks on your own around um, identifying your ideal buyers and your branding message and stuff like that. So um, with that being said, Sabrina, if you wouldn't mind giving me the screen share option and I'll go ahead and share my slideshow. All right, I think I'll have to make you host to do that. Let me make sure I can get you into here, okay. You're good to go. Okay. So this should be coming up as a full screen. Is that so, Sabrina? Not seeing it as of yet, but have you, you went ahead and selected the share screen. It's going to ask you to select what you want to share from your screen. Yeah, let me, let me back out again and see here. Sorry, everyone, just give me one second here. I don't see it asking me anywhere. Um, so at the dot bottom, when it goes to share screen? Yeah. Um, it should pull up a window application that you can select then what you would like to share. Okay, got it. Perfect. How's that? There. That works, I see your list. Okay, so the very, and is, is the Tom Bird Method logo coming up, Sabrina? 
Not yet, but it could be a delay in the Wi-Fi connection. Right now, all I'm seeing is um, a list of files from your desktop. Okay. So it could be if you go back to share screen, you have to actually probably open it up first and hit share screen. And then when it asks you what you want to share, you need to click on that PDF. Because if you have it open, you're only sharing this part of it. Okay, go let back me down to your share screen or okay. go to your view options and uh, yeah, let's see. I wonder if I can do remote control with you. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to try it one more time here. There it is. Okay, wonderful. All right, everybody. So um, the the official brand. Uh, Tom Bird method marketing platform that we're going to be offering to authors. We're still working with the name, but this is all kind of in the beta testing uh, phase. So I wanted to try this on with everybody. Marketing strategies to monetize your message. And what I want to point out about this is that this is not just about the book. This is really about your overall brand and what you're wanting to create for um, yourself. For some of you, it is specifically about the book, becoming a bestseller. Um, for some of you, it's getting your book turned into a movie. For others, it's to elevate your coaching business or your speaking business. So we really wanted, we want this program to encompass whatever your specific goal is. And that's going to be a lot of the work that me and my team do with the authors that decide to enroll in this program is to really define some measurable and smart goals that uh, are going to elevate you, make you profitable. Um, I know sometimes there can be a bit of a taboo in the world of talking about profitability and all that, but I'm, I'm a stickler for having measurable results and promising a return on investment for the people that I work with. So um, we're going to be talking about this whole process a lot more as we go along here. The first thing I wanted to do is just remind everybody, uh, my background is actually in uh, marketing and sales. I've been in marketing and sales for about 24 years. I've been in digital marketing now for about 13 years, 14 years, and I specifically have been working with authors, speakers, and professional coaches that entire time. So um, I have been an independent consultant. I've had a, my own agency. I sold that agency and became a consultant again. And then um, that's led me to, to be working with Tom. And the, where we're at right now with this is that um, Tom would really like for me to, to take about six authors through this process for about seven months. And uh, exactly what I did for him, and I'm going to share those results with you a little bit later, but take six authors through the same process that I went through with him that are very specific to their goals. So it's not just a turnkey or cookie cutter marketing uh, program. It's going to be very specified to each individual author's goals and where they're at in their career and that sort of thing. Please connect with me on, on any of my social platforms. I'm on all of them. So um, just find me on there and you can check out my, my resume and we can be friends online. So what, what started this whole process was, as Sabrina said, I started working with Tom at the beginning of the year in 2016, and it became clear to me that I needed to do a pretty thorough survey of his database. And some of you may have actually um, participated in this survey. We gave away a few free weekend retreats as a, as a survey uh, reward for a few random people. And one of the interesting things that kept coming up throughout this survey was that people needed marketing assistance. Um, we were asking questions rather sneakily to find out where Tom needed to be online. So we were asking questions like, where do you spend time online? Um, what kind of blogs do you read and that sort of thing? Because I was prepping Tom's marketing plan at the time and trying to find out where his existing audience or potential audience hangs out. So this is just a, a screenshot of a, of a sample. I believe the total survey was around 20 pages or so. And this was very, very specific to online behavior 
and where people were at in their Tom Bird method process. So you'll see in terms of, you know, a good thousand of you, the majority of you are on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest, and then it kind of goes down from there. Um, I wish that I would have had a few more specific platforms listed on here, but some of them that, that were actually penciled in are listed here in this bottom blue bar. Um, so the top platforms for authors that I have found and that I've also found in a couple of other uh, surveys are Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and then in terms of what most authors said they needed help with, it was um, organization, um, uh, promotion, marketing, and um, the ability to make their book more profitable. So whether it was selling more actual copies of the book or using the book in their business, um, it was the, the profitability aspect that people wanted some more assistance with. So that basically led us to, okay, how can we, you know, do this for Tom and, and then ultimately his, his followers and customers. Um, and for those of you that have seen my webinars in the past, you, you'll know that I am really big on content, um, not just social media or, or web websites, but you know, the whole content piece of your online marketing. And so I've listed here, all the different ways that that can really that, that can encompass, including your book, your blogs, newsletter, ebooks, web webcasts, webinars, um, pretty much anything online or digital that you're doing uh, or would like to do. And essentially, what what puts you as authors in such a good position with this is that you're writers, and so creating content is probably not as painful for you or maybe it is, as most other people that maybe aren't comfortable with writing. Um, and one of the things that I've included here is this, this little uh, graphic that talks about the difference between inbound marketing and outbound marketing and how things are changing these days with marketing. And this is the same whether we're talking about a book or a shoe company or whatever is that traditional marketing is one of interruption. It's one where we are uh, bombarding people between their favorite TV programs on television, or even if they're on YouTube, their YouTube videos get interrupted by commercials. Um, the fact that people still do direct mail pieces, even though 90% of them get thrown in the trash. Think of all the political postcards you got this last election season and whatnot. And so, the data just shows us that the way that we are being retrained to buy things these days has very little to do with interruption and being convinced that we need something and instead being uh, shown that there are options out there and building preference with a brand so that when we know we want to buy something, we already have heard of them or have a, a, a bit of a leaning. So some of the examples that I've used with people is like whenever I was in the market for a car a couple of years ago, I didn't wait for a John Elway postcard to come in the mail. I went on Facebook and asked all my friends, you know, I'm looking for a four by four with good gas mileage, blah, blah, blah. That's how I started my search. Now I know books might be a different um, arena as our professional speakers and professional coaches. But in terms of building preference and setting yourself apart from the competition in whatever arena you're looking to grow your business, there is a way where this content creation can have you constantly in front of new people in a way that you wouldn't otherwise have if you weren't really active and knowing how to properly use things like social media and email marketing and things like that. So um, I'm a certified inbound marketer. I got my certification about um, five years ago where I really learned the ins and outs of um, social media, um, newsletters, blogging, websites, things like that. Um, and so if you work with me or you continue to listen to these free webinars, you'll constantly hear me bringing up this building preference and this way that marketing is just changing and you're either 
you just can't deny it. And so you're either deciding to, okay, play along or not. Um, I, I'm also a big fat fan of analytics and statistics. And so I tend to include some of those in my slideshows. And um, Sabrina has been putting my webinars in the Publish Now folder. For those of you that are not in Publish Now and you're joining this call as a guest or you're potentially watching this at a later date, and you want some of my webinars that list some of these other things like social media marketing and content creation, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to share those with you. But so you can see here, you know, 68% of consumers, um, I'm just really big on showing the proof that people are buying in a very different way. Um, this link, 2016 marketing statistics, that will be a live link in your copy of this webinar, and it's just got tons of, of these kinds of numbers that can kind of show you a little bit better where you might want to be and be participating. Okay, so the next kind of phase of all of this is um, really looking at the brand. Again, so just saying, okay, what is it that I really want to achieve here? Is it becoming an Amazon bestseller? Um, is it becoming a New York Times bestseller? That was actually one of the first conversations that Tom and I had when he wanted to work with me a year ago was would I be interested in creating a brand of his, a branch of his uh, company for New York Times bestsellers? And for you're all authors, so you probably have looked at this and seen it, but there are brokers out there that can get you New York Times bestselling status for $125,000 by playing the game and doing all that they do to make that happen. But I've worked with New York Times bestselling authors who legitimately got to that place. And it doesn't, didn't necessarily make a difference for their, their business in terms of it translating to profitability. And so I really wasn't interested in, in creating that part of the business. I wanted to create something that was more about really looking at what do, how do I want to spend my time? Sabrina and I talk about this all the time. You know, what's fun? What's easy? What creates value in my life that hasn't mean something? And that's not just about, you know, creating a paycheck or, or getting my ego stroked, but there is an element to being alive that has us go, okay, how do we be professional? So I'm really looking to work with authors one-on-one -on -one around what it is that they want to create in their life. And that's really what this whole branding message really looks like. So it's the ability to really um, give focus to your business and what it is that you want to create, um, cultivating ways to, to phrase your entire uh, brand and company, your book. Um, so I've just listed out a lot of ways here that working with your brand directly can not only strengthen your company, but your book and all the other aspects of your business. Um, something that we're gonna talk pretty thoroughly about in a little bit too is goals. And um, because we have this new offering with Tom, um, I've been having a lot of conversations with authors and it's so surprising to me how many people I'll say, well, what's your ultimate goal? And they'll say something like, well, I'd like to publish my second book or I'd like to create a workbook to go with my first book. And I go, well, is that really your goal? Because that's just gonna happen, you know? What's, what, what's gonna get you excited and have you really look at your business and go, oh my God, I did that. And a lot of times it comes down to numbers, you know? I'd like to sell X amount of copies of my book or I would like to increase my coaching business in the next year by X percent those sort of things. And so again, it's another thing where I think sometimes when we're not working with someone who can kind of push us along, we tend to just settle and, and go for the lowest. I'm not saying it's not a huge accomplishment that those of you on this call have written and published your book, but we're kind of wanting to take that to the next step, obviously here. So essentially, um, what I want to do is also provide examples of good examples of some of the things that I'm talking about. So when you get this webinar, you'll actually be able to click on all these things. And so for instance, I've given some examples here of ways that people have done branding without even really thinking about it. So uh, one example here is 
um, R.L. Stein, and I know that he's like this, you know, famous author at this point. He's been around for a long time. Um, oh, there's audio here, so I'm going to have to jump off of his because I can't talk at the same time. Or, or this one where you can tell right out of the gate the feel and the sense of their website um, just emits this, this way that you can get a sense for, okay, she writes about the prairie or R.L. Stein writes about horror. Um, Jack Canfield is one that I've done a little bit of work with in the past. And um, his site is very clean and, and simple, but that's part of his branding is he doesn't, didn't want it gummed up with a whole lot of extra stuff and everything. So his idea was to be very professional. It's very Jack oriented. So there's lots of images of Jack, but that's it. Other than that, it's very simple. So every, every one of you has the opportunity to really do this with your website, with your newsletter, with your social media, where you're really looking at what your brand message is and the kind of feeling that you want to emit and having that be almost nonverbal or pre-verbal um, to get a sense of that. And we did that with Tom's. If you look at Tom's website now, you know, I think it really, there's a lot going on because there's a lot going on with Tom and the organization and all the things we offer, but it also has this kind of sense of peace and these are the steps you take and that sort of thing. So um, the next thing that, that this kind of led us into was, okay, so how do we create the right kind of goals to go along with a marketing plan like this? And uh, SMART goals have been around for a long time. This may not be something that's new to some of you, but it's the idea that you don't just say something like, I'd like to publish my second book, or I'd like to, you know, publish a workbook to go with my first book. Instead, you would really go through your, your goals and first of all, get clear about what we've already um, gone over, which is what is really my goal here? And if it's not, uh, there's no reason to get hung up on becoming a best-selling author if your true goal is to triple your coaching business or double your coaching rates, or increase your speaking fees, and, and reach a certain level. So what I would recommend is using something like this SMART goals tool that allows you to really look at things that are very specific, and measurable, attainable, and that's always a little bit of a, of a slippery slope, because you want it to be something that's gonna keep you excited about the project and moving forward, but also that's realistic. Um, for those of you that are gonna take on your own marketing and really um, you know, utilize this process some for your book or your career, it would, be, it would make sense to have goals about your social media that are smart. You know, if you're starting out with uh, a brand new Facebook fan page that, that only has maybe 50 fans, then a smart goal might be to get 300 Facebook fans within, you know, two months or three months. And, um, and then to kind of back that up is to really look at why that's relevant. Well, in this case, it would be relevant if some of your Facebook links also include links back to the website. You know, you want it to be to mean something and not just be there for the sake of being there. Um, and then lastly is timely. You want to have a, a time limit on it and not just have it be something that's open-ended because, you know, that's like saying I want to be my perfect weight by the time I die and never reaching it versus it being something that's, that's, you know, within my scope and ability to achieve. So this particular page um, is, I think, going to be really helpful for some of you. And this might even be something that we do a, for a, another webinar on down the road. Sabrina and I have talked about me doing a monthly webinar for Publish Now that maybe is focusing on a specific social media or specific part of a marketing platform or something like that. Um, and I think that this is one that really could use some more time and, and maybe some examples as we move forward here. So the next part of this is to really study the market and create your ideal customer. And um, this is, you know, I can't tell you how many authors and coaches and speakers I've worked with that say, um, well, everybody needs to read my book or everybody needs to hear my message. 
And um, as valid as that may feel to the individual that their message is relevant and should be heard by people or read by people, that's not an ideal customer. Um, and the reason that this is so important is because if you don't have an ideal customer put together or customers put together before or, or as you're putting your marketing strategy together, you're constantly going to be kind of shooting in the dark um, in, in terms of who you're, not only who you're reaching, but where you're spending your money, your time, um, the kind of content that you're creating. And so with Tom, you know, that was one of the first things that we did with that marketing survey is we asked you guys these questions. We asked you, you know, your age. We asked you what you do for a living. We asked you what your goals are, um, you know, where you spend your time online. Facebook versus Twitter and that sort of thing. And so um, what I would advise you to do is to find a couple of people that you believe could fall into your certain target audience and, and interview them. Um, give them a gift card to Applebee's for participating or something, but get good information from people. And, and if you, you, you may not have a list like Tom's that's got thousands and thousands of people on it because he's been building this business for 30 years. But even if you could just do a small section of a few people that they, not friends that, that are going to just kind of tell you what you want to hear, unless they are part of that target market. If you feel like I wrote this romance fiction that my, you know, girlfriend Stacy would be an ideal customer for, she would be the kind of person that you would want to get this information from. Um, and then really this whole process of, of identifying the ideal customer is going to give you so much information for your entire marketing plan um, in terms of their needs, what they're interested in, um, understanding maybe even more how they make purchasing decisions. Um, for uh, th those of you that might be uh, speaking, your, your, your audience for the audience, the speaking audience that you're, that you're speaking to, it potentially is a very different buyer or customer than the person that has the discretionary budget to book you as a speaker. So there's things like that that you want to get really clear about, you know, in terms of the kind of content that you're putting together. And I've got lots of examples of speakers and authors that I've worked with where they were maybe trying to, the end user might have been different than the person purchasing it. And so you want to get really clear on that when you're putting this um, ideal customer together. And then lastly, um, segmented marketing is a really big deal going forward as well. We're just starting to scratch the surface of that with Tom because his list is so deep and old and we really had to spend a lot of time clean, cleaning it out and, and making it uh, uh, will have integrity because so many email addresses on there were outdated and stuff. And so what I would advise that you do is when from the very get go, if possible, um, ask people why they're at your website from the get go. When you, when you use a format uh, email capture like MailChimp or Constant Contact or anything like that, you can usually pretty easily um, put a list of reasons why. So in Tom's case, we would ask them to give us their email address in order to get, let's say, the free audio download or a free ebook, right? Because you're always trying to give people a reason to give, them, give you that email address. That's still the golden ticket for online marketing is you want to get that email address. And so a lot of times you might have to give them a free chapter of the book or a free 10 minute coaching session or something for free. Um, but you can ask them what they're most interested in. I'm a buyer, I'm, I'm a salesperson, I'm whatever. Um, so that as your list deepens, you actually have that segmentation from the get go and you can customize content uh, along the way. You'll want to send a different content, uh, free content in an email to maybe the managers as you would the, the people working and that sort of thing. All right, so that really um, then brings us to competition. So really looking at um, who it is out there that 
and I need to be careful about how I say this because we don't want to go from um, being a first time author who has a mailing list of 50 people to seeing Jack Canfield and saying, that's my competitor. Um, Cause as Jack Canfield said, you know, we all know this. I think he said, I, I was a, I was a, I was an overnight su success. It just took me 30 years, you know, but he was one of those guys out there busting down doors for, I think 20 or 30 years before he finally got his first bestseller and, and kind of hit the jackpot. And so what I'm saying in, in the way of competitors is just to be a little bit more realistic about someone who maybe is a few years ahead of you. Maybe they've got a website that you admire. They've got uh, active social media. Um, people seem to be engaged with them in a way that you would like to have people be engaged with you. Um, if you've got somebody that you've kind of considered a competitor and you go to their social media and it's crickets or you go to their website and all the links are broken and you don't know what's going on, they may not be doing as well as you think they are. So I would just caution you to kind of keep an open mind and do a little bit of, of research on that because um, you can learn a lot. I mean, this is one of the first things that my team and I do when we're working on a marketing plan is identify maybe five competitors that we can really do a thorough analysis of their website and their social media. You should be signed up to all of your competitors' uh, newsletters to see what they're doing and maybe what's working and what's not. Um, so that you can really not only uh, weed out the ones that are not doing as well as we might think um, and hopefully overcome them and actually be doing even better, but also to, to duplicate what they're doing well. I mean, that's, that's ultimately, you know, the purpose of all this free content and ways that we market online, um, you know, do, do what works. And if you see your competitor doing something that you're really impressed by and you can see it getting results on their blog, you know, if, if their blog has zero comments on it, that, that says something about the engagement with their list and the kind of people that might be reading it. But this is, again, something that, you know, would be really good to, to know about your, your competitors. What's their elevator pitch? Um, you know, how, how is their book or service um, doing? How, you know, what is it that makes them original or different? Um, so, I would just, again, spend some time on this and, and really have a good idea of who these people are for yourself and your product or, or your book. Um, so this brings us to the, the editorial calendar. So everything we've talked about thus far is just real kind of you know, surface level. Like these are the things that you wanna do when you're putting your marketing strategy together. There are two other webinars that we have um, in the, in the uh, Dropbox for Publish Now. One is about social media and one is about content. And those are each, I think, 15 pages long, just chock full of content about those specific things. So for the purposes of this webinar, I didn't want to be redundant with those, but I could have done slide after slide based on content creation and blogging and, and Facebook and all that stuff, but those are in those other webinars. But the bottom line is you, you are going to want to do that same kind of research on the platforms as you would do on competitors and your ideal customers and stuff like that. Um, you don't need to be on every social media. Um, there are very specific analytics around the age brackets that are on Twitter and Facebook um, LinkedIn, the kind of buyers that are hanging out on all these different websites and, and social media platforms. And so I typically recommend trying out three and seeing where you're getting some results. Uh, just because everybody says you should be on LinkedIn is not necessarily true. My experience in working with authors is it's one thing to be an author in an author community to get support and feedback and maybe to do some cross promotion with one another, but to just solely look for other authors on social media is not a good strategy because obviously you're trying to reach your, unless your ideal client is a, a author, which 
would be Tom's ideal customer. Um, you know, people that have always wanted to write a book and not, not, been able to release that in their life. And so, you know, those are his ideal customer, but I would imagine for most of you, it would be a different kind of demographic. So you need to, to spend time on all of those when you're putting together that, that marketing strategy. And then in my um, work with the way that we usually summate all of this is in a marketing plan and one of the marketing plan elements is an editorial calendar. And I just put together or took a snapshot of one of Tom's pages here. I think it has, I think the columns in his, his actual editorial calendar, there's like five, five or six more columns, but I just took a snapshot of what I could on my screen. But essentially, um, this is really keeping the whole team in line around what the content is that we need to be creating in any given week. Now, if you're a solo um, entrepreneur, author, and it's just you, you know, you may not need all of these elements, but in our world, because we've got, you know, writing retreats, publishing, now marketing, Tom's involved, we've got a couple of assistants, we need to have all those hands talking to one another. And so we really needed to be sure that we had something lined up for a quarter at a time. Also, um, when you have something strategic like this put together, it's easier to repurpose things because you have a more accurate inventory about where things are being used. So for instance, in the, in the, in the specific um, uh, Tom Bird blog here, he was gonna be writing a blog about a certain topic and then we're going to turn around and repurpose that the very the very next week as it's going to start as a blog and then it's going to be put in the newsletter and then down the road a couple weeks down the road we might add it as a freebie on the website so you know the philosophy with online marketing is you never just use this this item once um, you're using it in all these different areas not necessarily at the same time and then lastly you can take this 300 word blog and slice it and dice it for social media updates, which is what I was mentioning earlier around, uh, you know, grabbing a really powerful quote from a blog, but then including the link on Facebook so that they actually link back to the website because ultimately we want to get them off of Facebook, off of Twitter, and we want to get them back on the website. We want them to poke around and, and be interested in what's on the website and then ultimately have enough of a reason to give us that email address. Um, and then I've got listed here um, the results from what this marketing platform did for Tom. Um, this was included in uh, the email that was sent out yesterday or the day before. And so you might already seen this, but I'm really proud of these results. And it wasn't just me. It was um, my assistant, Megan. Sabrina had a huge hand in this. But ultimately, we, we really improved dramatically the, the message of the Tom Bird Method Company. The website, the social media, the, the, the uh, newsletter, We've increased um, all of the analytics, the open and click-through rates of the newsletter, of the website. I mean, the website sessions up yesterday or the day before I checked them, they, they're up by 2,000%. I mean, it's just really impressive when you look at what can be done whenever you have a little bit of professional help and strategy along with staying true, because obviously, this all had to stay true to Tom's heart as well, just like each one of you are going to want to have your brand and your website and all of this stay true to your message. Um, but to have it also created in such a way that it's relevant to the reader, that's the part that I think I probably sound most like a broken record about is it's one thing to think that your book and your content and all of that is good and relevant, but really. To, to be in that ideal customer seat and be thinking about it from the perspective of um, what's, what's interesting to them, what's entertaining to them. Um, sometimes it involves a problem, you know, what's the problem for them that you're going to help solve or relieve stress around or whatever. And so um, I think, you know, 
this is the, these are the kind of goals that we had for Tom early on around one of the first conversations that I had with him. Um, and Sabrina and I have joked with him since then. He said, I, oh, I just want to have world domination uh, in people writing their books. And I kind of laughed, but he was being <laughs> serious. Um, and I said, well, let's just take a step back here and, you know, come up with some smart goals. And they were some of these goals that you're looking at now or results that you're looking at now around website sessions, users, sales, stuff like that. And so um, I can say with confidence that we've achieved all the goals that we, that we set out to achieve with Tom in March. And now we're looking at how, how to take this to the next level with all of you. So this really brings me to the part of the call where I'm going to present this new marketing platform. Um, and this is just one slide, and it's really just to go over how this is going to go. Uh, I'm going to try to steer away from being date specific because we're going to utilize this recorded webinar potentially for some, some later dates. And so um, for now, I'm just going to be a little bit generic and then I can get a little bit more specific probably during the Q&A. So the first part of this is just to contact me and we'll set up a quick call, 15, 30 minutes, whatever you need. And we'll talk a little bit more in depth about this. And this is just for the marketing plan. Okay, this isn't for the actual implementation. So the marketing plan would be putting this whole plan together where you need to be online, you know, who your target audience is, what we recommend in the way of social media platforms, an editorial calendar, that will all be in the plan, okay? Um, so the step one is contact me and we set up a conversation. Step two is you've decided to move forward with the plan. And just so you know, the plan is $4,000. That's the, the, the plan price. If you decide to move forward with the Tom Bird team to take that plan and implement it, we're going to refund some of that money back to you. But if you just take the plan and love it, decide you want to run with it yourself, it's, it's $4,000 flat and you'll have a marketing plan. When my boutique agency and I used to do these plans, they were $8,000. So uh, we, I told Tom for this initial beta group that we would do half of that, which is the $4,000. There's going to be three of us working on these, and we're only taking eight marketing plan authors for now. Um, so that's, that's the deal right now. They're $4,000. They take a month to do, and we're only doing eight of them, and then we're going to take the first group of authors through, through the end of their marketing plans for the next six months. So the step two is the market for the marketing plan is you would fill out a password list and just kind of an overall client questionnaire that's got, I think it's about 10 pages. It's got some benchmarks and different things about all your social media platforms and whatnot. And then ultimately you'll give that back to me. And then over the course of the next month, we will have a variety of interviews and brainstorming sessions between myself and you or you and one of my team members and myself. That's step three. That's where we're going to be really looking at your current or potentially new pricing goals, uh, primary goals, uh, brand differentials, and um, strategy. We're going to be really talking through all of this and putting it together over these, the course of these calls. I have found that whenever I just used to hand these off to people, it, they just would get stopped. And so essentially we, we really want to hold your hand through these and make sure that you're feeling taken care of and generating new ideas and stuff like that. So that will be a very interactive process to fill out these uh, uh, marketing interview forms. Then the next piece is that my team and I go to work and we spend approximately 50 hours doing marketing research. Um, and that would be step four here. So this is where we really look at competitive research. Um, we look at the ideal customer target market findings. 
um, review all of the um, online platforms and social media platforms that you're either already on or considering using, and then um, any other resources that we might need, like um, if you're needing some additional website help, graphic design, copywriting, all of that. So my resource reach is, is much deeper than my team that's going to be working on these. Um, but for the, the purpose of this beta group, we're going to be just the three of us, and then I can outreach to people if I need to. And then step five is where we will deliver you this marketing plan. And so it basically here it covers up everything that, that will be covered, at, covered in that marketing plan. So if we need to reframe the brand or if it's brand new and you needed something from scratch, um, the $4,000 does not include a logo or a website design. However, I'm happy to put together some ideas and have that conversation with people one-on-one -on -one to where if they, they really do already know that they're going to want to move forward with the marketing plan as a whole, that we can go ahead and get started on that sooner rather than later. I have pricing for that and I know what it costs to create a logo and a website and stuff like that. Um, so I, I just want to be clear about that. Um, in Tom's case, he needed a 100% over, overhaul from the get-go, and so we knew that going into the plan. Um, whether the website needs recommendations or, or a complete redo or maybe built from scratch, the uh, comprehensive editorial calendar, with the hours that we have allotted for these marketing plans, I'm probably only going to be able to do two months of an editorial calendar, but it really depends on how many of those ideal customers we come up with. So I once had a client, um, he was a professional speaker and an author. He had, I think, five published books, but his real profession and goal was around his professional speaking, and he was a true professional speaker. He spoke, you know, three cities a week, you know, didn't get on a plane for less than like $7,500. And whenever we did his marketing research, um, he had like 10 ideal buyers because his silos for his professional speaking were so specific that he really wanted to have specific content for each of them. So um, his editorial calendar was a nightmare. <laughs> it took me, and he wanted a whole year's worth that's an extreme version. In Tom's version, he decided to go with one ideal customer, and so putting his editorial calendar was much easier. So that's going to be a case-by-case -case, um, issue. Um, and then um, lastly is creating the SMART goals, um, identifying any cost savings. In Tom's case, you know, again, because he's been around so long, he had old platforms that were just, you know, not being used or not being used efficiently. So we saved him, you know, quite a bit of money just by shutting down things that were antiquated or by re-upping them to, to a different platform that was more efficient and economical. And then lastly, in this marketing plan, we will include a timeline, scope of work, and a cost for us to do the work for you. So, um, the way that we're envisioning this right now is that it would be um, an additional six months and uh, the cost will be very specific to, like I said, what it is that that author needs and wants. Um, I do anticipate, though, these programs potentially being $15,000, $20,000, depending on the, the scope of work. Um, I know that that's a lot. And uh, there is a chance that we are going to launch a lower version of this, potentially at the beginning of next year, where it's maybe like a, a DIY, like a do-it-yourself version. Um, I've done smaller marketing plans with authors and speakers in the past. At one point, my marketing agency had like eight employees, and we had like 35 clients, and we were doing you know, a thousand dollars here and a thousand dollars there and just doing Facebook or just doing their newsletter. And I found that it's just not really effective unless you are an author marketer yourself and you really are doing all the other legwork. Um, 
doing one version of this is not really going to going to get you the results that you want. I'm, I'm not going to recommend anything that I don't think is needed either, but I just am very, very cautious now about offering to do this at a rock bottom price for someone when they can go to um, a virtual assistant site and, and find someone in India to, to post to their Facebook once a day. And if that's the kind of level that people are looking for. There are plenty of people out there that do that for $10, $15, $20 an hour, but that's not what we're talking about here. This is a real comprehensive strategic marketing agenda that, that we want, and we want it to be successful for people. Uh, and then lastly, just a few things to kind of wrap up the, the slideshow. I did want to include tracking, ROI, some of my suggestions for um, Google Analytics. I included some links for some blogs that I've done recently for Tom that are more specific to blogging and content creation and stuff like that. And with that being said, I think we are almost at the one hour mark and I've covered a ton of stuff. So I'm going to um, find out here how I can open this up for Q&A and then we'll spend this last 20 minutes or so together answering questions. So Dusty, we can definitely take um, some questions right in the chat room, or I'd be happy to go ahead and bring everyone up um, that are currently viewers. Whatever you want me to do. Do you want me to just pull, pull, pull up chat? Um, we have chat up. I don't have anyone putting questions in. So I'm going to go ahead and just start promoting people to panelists. And if they have, if they have a question, um, oh, oh. You're the host. Do I need to give it back to you? <laughs> yeah. If you click on my screen, um, the three dots in the top, just um, click on that and you should be able to make me the host. Okay. In the meantime, if anyone does have questions, feel free to put it into the chat. But I have a feeling that some of these questions might be very specific to their needs mm -hmm. and um, more difficult to just put into the chat. Are you seeing that? Are you able to do that? Uh, I did that. Let me make sure. Okay. Because I'm so close. We have a, Q, a question here and that's, well, Dusty Meehan asked. So there are actually three people on the viewer <laughs> that has your name. So <laughs> you're just very popular tonight. But it sounds, um, this, this person says, this sounds like a program for those that are serious about their goal and what their book really says to those in the universe of the author. That is true. And wasn't really a question. If you want to open up to unmute, I'm happy to elaborate. So um, I would be happy to do that once I get to that. I, 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 I'm doing it, Sabrina, and for some reason it's not, it's just, it's not can I make you the co-host? I keep clicking. Um, well, we have somebody asking about what the $4,000 covers. So I'm going to have you do that and let me see what I can. Um, I might have to sure. go out and come back in perhaps. So the $4,000 is on this screen here, uh, marketing strategies to monetize your message. And so everything that's listed here would be included in that all the way from the very first document that includes me being able to log in to your website, newsletter, social medias, and look under the hood, all the way through us uh, interviewing you and having multiple conversations around what you've already done, what, you, what your goals are, where you really want to go. Um, I think whenever I add all of these documents up together, they're in total without any fill in, I think about 25 pages. And so we have a lot of stuff to get through that in my experience, it kind of takes asking things a couple of different ways to get deeper and deeper into the brand message and what it is that you really want to achieve. So that interview process is, is invaluable. Uh, then it also includes this step four, which is all of my and my team's research and all that we'll be doing on your behalf. Having been in this industry for 10 plus years, I have a lot of shortcuts and graders and ways to really do things that the average person online can't do. Um, competitive research, website graders, things like that. 
Um, we also will, will really, underneath this step five, be putting together the plan, you know, called, you know, your, your marketing plan. That's what we did for Tom. And we really brought that back to him and said, you know, this is what we envision the website being. This is what we think your, your new tagline should be. This is what, what we've identified as your target audience. These are the social medias we believe you should be on. So it's, it's everything that you see on this page, step one through five. And then it ends with that last part, which is the pricing for all of this to be implemented. Um, when I had my agency and we used to do these for people for $10,000, they would, about nine out of 10 people would have us do the work. So that's why I, I present it this way where it's $4,000. And if you love it and go, this is amazing. I'm going to hire a couple of VAs and I think we can handle this ourselves. It's yours. You bought it. And it's going to be a professional grade marketing, marketing plan. But in my experience, the majority of people are going to say, this is great. I love it, but there is no chance that I'm going to ever do this myself or project manage it with someone else or another team. What, you know, I'd like for you guys to do it for me. And so that's, you know, that's what we're counting on is that a lot of people will ultimately want us to do it for them, but they don't have to. It's, it's their plan either way. Did that answer the question? Well, I think it answered the question. I, I mean, and we'll send out this PDF along with the recording that shows all those steps and everything that is covered in those steps yeah. for that initial $4,000 investment for the marketing plan. Um, some other questions that have come in, we have a couple authors who um, are interested, but their book isn't ready or is going to be ready for a few months and wondering when would be the best time to start something like this. I love this question because uh, I cannot tell you how many times I've been called by someone and they say, I'll, I'll give you an example. This guy was an Olympian. He had been a um, bobsled Olympian like 20 years ago. And he's written a bunch of books. Great guy. But he called me and said, um, I've got a re-release of my book coming out before the Winter Olympics. And I'm wondering if you can, you know, upgrade all of my stuff online. And I said, well, what's your timeline and everything? And he said, two weeks. And I was like, oh, my, you know, so a lot of people have this idea that they can wait and do this at the last minute. I've gone over the timeline with Tom around the ideal times to release a book. And because I'm, publishing is not my expertise, uh, marketing is, uh, Tom has advised me to set this particular group up in such a way that six authors are going to go through a marketing plan together. And by that, I mean, they're going to hire us to implement it for them. Um, April through September. And the reason for that is that he, that Q4 release of a book is ideal with, in conjunction with a marketing strategy like this. So what you wouldn't want to do is go through all of this process with your book and then wait and do this, start this a month before your book releases. Now, what's great is that to the, to the outside world, they don't necessarily know when your book is released, but we, we would want to work together in conjunction with Sabrina and the Publish Now team to try to align that in such a way that the marketing is really set up and really rocking and rolling pretty well. And you can build and generate some excitement, get your blog going, get your social media following going well before the book is launched. So that by the time it is launched, you've actually already got that going for you instead of waiting to do it after the fact, that would be my recommendation. So that was a very long answer to say, I would, I would do it now. I would actually start this process now if you think that you're going to release a book at the end of the year. I think that's great. And I mean, there's no time to start building your platform like the present. And if, if, 
any of these authors were going to a traditional um, book publisher, the first thing they they don't even want to see the manuscript. They just want to see the book proposal. And the very first thing they look at in that book proposal is your platform numbers. What's your reach? Where's your audience? And how many people are going to likely buy your book? Um, so no time like the present to begin platform building, in my opinion. Um, there is a good question here is like, how is this different from the best selling author program and the marketing that is provided there? You know, um, this is not a best selling Amazon bestseller program. Um, I don't know. All I know about what's done on that part of things, both, both the, the, the publish now side of the, the marketing, you know, building a, a basic website and stuff. And then Denise's additional Amazon bestseller. Um, those are very entry level, basic, no, not, not really a, a, an agenda that we're, that we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I haven't compared what, what Denise does side by side with what we're planning to do, but I would just, maybe this would be a good thing for us to discuss in a conversation. And, and if you want to message me and set up a time to talk next week, um, I think that there are it's a it's the bigger conversation around what what your goal is and what you're really trying to create for your for yourself and for your business. If if an Amazon bestseller is something that is you're you're called to and you feel like that's the extent of what it is that you want to do, um, then do that platform. I think that that's great. But this is really and I, I don't want to say this and have it sound um, disrespectful, but this is really a different level of service and, and commitment that I think we're going to be delivering. Um, the hours alone that we're going to be committed to people in creating everything from their, their strategy, their brand, their, their website. I, I just think it's going to be um, a deeper level of service. Um, I, I think Denise is great. I know she would bend over backwards for anybody, but her commitment is to make you an Amazon bestseller. And that's, that's what her commitment is. And this is really um, the ability to monetize your business to, to whatever degree it is that you're really wanting to focus on. Tom, Tom and I were talking the other day and we were talking about this and he kept bringing up the book, the book, the book. And I said, I know that's what you're so used to saying but we really need to reframe this to be about the business because this really isn't about the business. It's about, I mean, this isn't just about the book. It's about the business overall. But again, if you still have some lingering questions about that, just feel free to message me and we can talk about it. And I think that's great. And um, yes, yeah, some people, the best selling badge is perfect and meets your needs where I'm an Amazon best-selling author twice over in compilation books and it hasn't done squat for me <laughs> professionally or personally, you know, so, um, or profit and profit, but, um, that's not to say that that won't for you, but I do see a different level and differentiate between these two. Um, the, I'm, I still don't have rights to t change the viewers to panelists. Oh, but I'm so sorry, I, Sabrina. That's okay. It's, you know, it's just one of those things, but th they're doing great with the chat and it's keeping me busy. So I do want to note that yes, Dusty can definitely um, provide referrals from her past clients. Mm -hmm. And yeah. again, for that 15 minute or 30 minute introductory call yeah. to see if this is something that you would want to move forward with, reach out to her at dusty at tombird.com. D U S T Y at tombird.com. And this is another question regarding the difference between what you're providing and what a publicist would provide. Well, it's funny. Um, that's actually what got me into this business. So I'm going to share this story real quick. Um, so I used to be a regional marketing director for the company Life is Good. Some of you may recognize that the name of that brand. It's the big smiley face with the they're on hats and t-shirts and stuff. And um, I worked through the entire mountain territory, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, and loved the brand. I was like a poster child for optimism and good vibes and all that. But 
during the downfall of the economy, things started to get difficult and they wanted me to travel more, make less, all that. And I decided it's just time for a change. I wanted to, you know, so a friend of mine had recently published a book and she was going to author 101 in California. And I'm sure you all have heard of some version of this because you're writers. It was new to me at the time because I was not. And I was at this Author 101, which is actually put on by um, the Chicken Soup for the Soul guys. So Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen and all those guys. And my friend had asked me just to be kind of her handler and sell books for her and, you know, just kind of be there. She had a booth. And I had just got, you know, decided I was going to leave Life is Good and I was at this event. And I kept having these conversations with writers and authors who were really frustrated about the fact that they needed help with their marketing and creating a brand and and standing out from the competition, both online and all of that. But they were tired of paying publicists (laughs) these absorbent amounts of money and not really getting their the bang for their buck and I I met a couple of publicists there and they were fine people and I you know I thought you know but at that time it was something that was very very different you know online inbound digital marketing very very different from publicists who has maybe a Rolodex or whatever Um, today right now um, if you can find a top-notch publicist that is that, that has credibility and, and a happy client base that's willing to do everything that I'm talking about doing for you, including your market research, a, a marketing strategy and plan, potentially building out a, a top website and building your email list and doing your social media and all of that for you know the pricing that my team and I are, are talking about, then I say go for it. Um, what we're really doing with this beta program is testing out what this is going to look like both. We're, 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 let me put it this way. We're going to be a little picky about who we do this with because we do want this to be successful and we do want this to be a home run both for us and for the authors that we work with. And so um, that's why we decided to start with such a small amount of people and to also only offer it for a certain amount of time. Um, Maybe this time next year, we will have expanded and that sort of thing, but that's how confident I am about it is I really want it to be exclusive and I want it to be something that people are excited about getting into. And there may, you know, there's even a little bit of excitement about, will I get to do it, you know? So um, I don't know if that completely answers the question or not, but you know, that would be my take on it. And I think that's, yeah, an excellent take. And Karen, um, she did see that you worked with Life is Good. She goes, that's an amazing referral because she has several shirts. And, you know, (laughs) I do too. Dusty hooked me up (laughs) a lot of years. Um, Actually, can you just go back to do that? Because (laughs) I I enjoyed your discount. (laughs) But... You know, I don't want anyone that's in the best-selling author campaign to think that that's not it. You will expand your social media reach. But Denise is extremely upfront that the best-selling campaign is not going to equate to thousands of books sold. You can sell 50 books and get that number one based Mm -hmm. on the categories that you're in. So Mm -hmm. when you have that Amazon best-selling, and if I was actively promoting myself and those two books that I contributed to, Yes, it would mean something, Um, but it isn't necessarily going to equate to growing your business by itself without doing further additional content marketing, really getting your message out there. But the badge does help you, you know, get interviews and different things like that. It helps to set you apart. But it, and it will expand your social media reach. But again, it's kind of a different track. And so mm-hmm. I see them more as complementing one another, not being one or the other. Um, yeah. And yeah, so let's see here. So 
we've got the publicist question. So what, someone wanted to know after the $4,000 for this marketing plan, then what would the monthly cost be after that? So I, I put together a sample um, plan that I'm not going to share publicly at this point because I'm worried that people will then grab onto that and make it the truth that this is what theirs would cost when in reality they're going to be very customized and I don't want to mislead anybody or get their hopes up that it's going to be less or more or whatever. But I did put together this sample based on a six month plan. Um, and what I'm anticipating is that if people, if, if, if someone decides, oh my gosh, this plan is amazing. I absolutely want you to, to do it for me. They will have already paid that $4,000 we will refund back 500 a month for four months. So they get a $2,000 refund. So the marketing plan will have only cost 2000 instead of 4,000, but the ongoing six month plan will very greatly depend on if they need a website, if the website needs a redesign, if we're looking at a small list or a large list, how many social media platforms they want us to manage for them. It's going to be very, very customized, like I said, but in this particular um, summary that I did, this client did need a website, a logo, and um, three social medias, and after all was said and done, at the end of the seven months, the whole thing would have cost them about $24,000. And that includes the marketing plan. So it would have been 4,000 and then 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, and then 3,000 and then 2,000. So over the course of seven months, it would have totaled $24,000. But again, that's a sample. And, and I, I, I'm trying to keep this affordable as well. And so I have, uh, myself and my two team members, and then I have um, a, a designer and a website coder. A graph. I've got people in my back pocket that I've been working with for years that are really affordable. So that whenever I put this together and we hand it to you, this is the price. And if we're going to negotiate it, it's going to happen at the front end. But I will not be coming back to you down the road and saying we need more time or we need more money or whatever. And so, again, the plan is yours. And then you'll see the price if you decide to move forward or not. And you don't have to move forward right away. You could say, this is fantastic, but I just don't have it right now. You could try to implement it yourself or you could hold on to it for six months. I think we're probably only going to take people twice a year for this program and we're going to take them all through the program at the same time so they can support one another as well. So it might just mean that if you don't do it in April, there may not be another chance until like October or something like that. Well, and Jennifer Sanders, she asked a um, great question. So in order for them to be able to gain clarity on their ideal, um, client, competitors, overall goals, you provide a template that can help them work through that thought process. Uh, why don't you take a little bit of a, of a deeper look at the, the webinar that I did tonight and then also my uh, content webinar that I did because I actually did ask a lot of questions in, in there about the, the competitors and the, the demographics. Um, print all this stuff out, or if you don't want to you know, waste paper, really give it a thorough look. And if you're still need, needing some, you know, having some specific questions, shoot me an email. But I think I've done a, besides giving away all of my, my trade secrets and everything, I think I've given you guys a pretty good place to start. I agree. Well, and then Debbie Moody is um, also asking about how this differs from um, what David Thalberg is offering. You know, and hi, Debbie. I know Debbie Moody. 
Um, I can't see you because I don't know how to, I can't get <laughs> myself. I can, I can tell you how to promote them all, but it takes too much time. Uh, so um, what, let me, let me just try one last time because I would just love to see her face. If you go into participants down at the bottom, click on participants um, and it'll let you manage, then you'll see the list of the names. And when you click on a name, it will give you the option to promote to panelist. And you can also stop sharing your screen if you want and then they could see more of you. But yeah, unfortunately I'm kind of um, blind at the moment or unable to do this, but um, Paul is wondering where the webinars are located. You know, we would be, I'm sure Dusty would be working with everyone, not necessarily in person, but mostly through Zoom and different things like that, using this type of interface that um, allows people to connect no matter where they are from, so are located. So, um, and oh, Jennifer asked a good question. If it's recommended that you're going to work with Dusty, do you not work with Greg at Silver Knight for web design? So that's really a a good question as well. So. And I think Dusty froze up or did I freeze up? <laughs> Uh-oh.